Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you can use. In this video, we're going to do a stock analysis on a biopharmaceutical company called, called Serapta Th Therapeutics. Now, is this biotech company worth investing in right now with all the news that had just popped up and the skyrocketing prices and the stock price? Well, let's find out together. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offering, recent headline news, financials, and its projections, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your short-term and long-term growth investors out there. And as always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you'd like to hear daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. So let's get right into it. So as always, this video is brought to you by Weeble. Uh, it's a online brokerage trading platform where you can buy stock stocks, uh, bonds, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. If you sign up today and deposit any amount, you can get up to 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below. All right. So this company, Serpta Therapeutics, is a commercial stage biopharmaceutical company. It focuses on the discovery and development of RNA-targeted therapeutics, gene therapies, and other genetic therapeutic modalities for the treatment of rare diseases. It offers the Exxon DYS-51 injection to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, in patients with confirmed mutation of the dystrophin gene that is amenable to the exon 51 skipping. And uh, I can't even pronounce this, the Y1D53 uh, for the treatment of uh, Duchenne in patients with confirmed mutation of the dystrophin gene that is amenable to the exon 53 skipping. Now, the, uh, the company is also developing the AM, the Ahmad Diz. 45, which is a product candidate that uses uh, this chemistry and technology, exon skipping technology to uh, skip exon 45 from the gene. This is all really complicated to me. Basically, uh, they're a biopharmaceutical company and uh, they provide uh, gene therapy programs. No, it is has collaborated agreements, collaboration agreements. I'm sorry, with uh, Hoffman Roche, uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital, uh, Leso Gene, Duke University, uh, Gene Theon, and uh, Stride Bio. A company was uh, incorporated in 1980 and is headquartered in Massachusetts. So this isn't a recent startup. This is an existing company, biopharmaceutical, that has been here for a long time. So let's look at some of the news of the company right now. So last week, the company announced progress on the Myo AAV program, an exclusive licensing agreement with the Broad Institute for the Myo AAV Next Generation Capsids for Rare Genetic Diseases. I'm not going to try to explain this article, most of this article, but I'm going to read one part of it. Under the terms of the agreement, the company will receive worldwide commercial license grants for five neuromuscular and cardiac indicate indications including duchenne muscular dystrophy plus exclusive options on additional targets in addition to an upfront payment broad institute is entitled to future royalties and milestone payments now the details have not been disclosed so this is a money-making deal which is good for both companies um, but one of the biggest news that hit the market and which made this stock go par parabolic is they requested an expedited timeline for muscular dystrophy gene therapy. The SRP9001 is designed to promote the production of the micro uh, dystrophin protein. People afflicted with DMD are unable to produce a sufficient amount of this key structural uh, dystrophin protein, leading to a progressive loss of muscle strength. If approved by the FDA, Serapa and Roche's experimental gene therapy could potentially revolutionize the treatment of this inherited and often deadly disease. From a commercial standpoint alone, the reason why I bring this up is Wall Street thinks that this therapy could generate nearly $2 billion in annual sales at its peak if it actually gets approved. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and look at some of the fundamentals of the company right now and dive into that. So the stock is currently trading at $109 a share and it jumped up drastically from July. It was only trading at 60 four dollars a share back in uh june and then it just jumped all the way back up and then now it's coming down from its uh all-time peak 
It does have a market capitalization of around $9.5 billion, and it's projected uh, this year to have $919 million of revenue for 2022 with earnings of negative $564 million. Yes, this is not a profitable company right now. Now, the revenues are projected to increase over the next few years to around $1.8 billion by the end of 2024. So that's a drastic increase of the revenues right now, and they should have positive earnings by that time of $341 million. Wow. Okay, so let's look at some of the valuation profitability measures of this company. You know, looking at the valuation analysis, because the earnings of the company are not available, the price to sales and the price to book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. Therefore, this company seems fairly valued right now with the price to sales ratio of 11.86 times. That is in line with the biotechnology industry medium of 12.55 times. All through their price to book is 13.62 times, the highest in the industry. Now, if you look at the share price versus the fair value, now what is the fair price of this company? We're looking at its future cash flows. For this estimate, you can use the uh, discounted cash flow model. So it, we, we put a price tag of $1,108 a share. It's well below that, um, that estimate. So let's look at the profitability of, of this company right now. So it's one of the more profitable companies in the biotechnology industry with a net margin of 60.66%. Uh, its operating margin and net margin are among the strongest of any of the peers, while its gross margin is above the industry medium. Now, this company does not pay a dividend. Uh, however, the average yield on those stocks in the biotechnology industry that do pay dividends, they usually pay out about 4.76% on average, which is better than the yield of the S&P 500, which is 1.91%. All right, so let's look at the growth uh, potential for the analysis for this company. All through the earnings grew uh, over the past 12 months. They failed to keep pace with the growth in revenues. This may mean the company is becoming less efficient at using its resources. However, this result was better than that of the average company in the biotechnology industry. Now, the company is expected to become profitable over the next three years, and the revenue of 35.2% per year is forecast to grow faster than, than it has been. Now, looking at the financial strength of the company, because that's really important, is it going to go under just based upon its books? Now, although it reduced its percentage of debt using its capital structure this year, the company has a debt to total capital ratio of 60.25% and is among the most highly leveraged companies in the biotechnology industry. Its interest coverage ratio is only 15.5 times, which means that it does not earn enough from day-to-day -day operations to service its debt. However, the quick ratio shows that the balance sheet can make up for the shortfall as there is enough liquid assets to satisfy current obligations. What I mean by that, it the, sh the short-term assets of $2.5 billion it has on its books, it, it, it exceeds both its short-term liabilities of $545 million and its long-term liabilities of $1.7 billion. Now, we also have to note that shareholders have been diluted in the past. So what do analysts say specifically regarding this? So the analysts have a strong buy to buy recommendation on this company. And the average price target over the next 12 months is $127 a share uh, with a high estimate of being 182 and a low estimate of uh, $93 a share. So going over the few of the analyst reports right now. So um, the Ford Equity Research Report uh, on this company has a sell recommendation uh, on this company. It's result of their systematic analysis of the three basic characteristics, uh, earning strength, the relative valuation and recent stock price movement. The company has suffered from a, ne a very negative trend in earnings per share over the past five quarters because the company lacks sufficient analyst uh, data. We uh, place greater weight on the historical earnings per share trend as a measure of earning strength based on the operating earnings yield. The company is overvalued when compared to all the other companies they cover. Share price changes over the next year indicates the company will perform very poorly, poorly over the near term. Yes and no. So they're looking at just data. Now, yeah, they'll have to be, have that forward looking you know, vision on where this biotechnology. I mean, biotechnology is, uh, and biopharmaceutical companies is based upon are they going to get approved for the drugs? If they don't get approved for the drugs and therapies, they're not going to do so well. 
and the CFRA re report uh, updated on August 12th. They have a hold recommendation, and that was based on their quantitative model for the United States, the growth and valuation subcategories, the largest positive and negative drivers for their hold recommendation. And the valuation includes factors such as price to earnings, EBITDA, and price to cash flow. They ranked it as the 39th percentile of all the stocks in the models that they review. So let me bring it over here. So this is definitely an interesting one. It's uh it's definitely for it's a it's a risky one. So am I a buy hold or sell recommendation on Serapta Therapeutics? Here are my thoughts. Now, there is no way to know if the FDA will green light this intriguing gene therapy for DMD on an accelerated basis. Now, given the dire need for new treatment options for DMD and the therapy's strong data thus far, an accelerated approval certainly isn't out of the question. Still, this mid-cap biotech stock is arguably only suited for investors with an extremely high tolerance for risk due to the uncertainty surrounding the SRP 9001 upcoming regulatory review. And by the way, if it doesn't get that uh, uh, review, if it doesn't get approved, that stock is going to drop like a rock and let me bring uh it'll go back down to 90 80 dollars a share just from the news alone so be careful about that now the biotech sector comprises companies that typically have about 85 to 95 percent failure rate on everything they attempt to invent now even to achieve success takes about 10 to 12 years for most uh and, and most biotech businesses do not have measurable revenue for a long period of time but this isn't an existing this isn't a new startup that they've been in existence since 1980. i'm not too worried about them going into the future they would have to have everything uh not approved not approved for them to uh to worry so based on all that information i am a risky long-term buy recommendation on Serapa Therapeutics with a 12 month, 12, uh, 12 month price target of $150 a share. And I'm, I go above the other analysts because if they get that approved, it's gonna go above 150, you might even see 160, $170 if they can get that $2 billion of revenue. So I see this as a high growth potential with adequate balance sheet behind it. Now, I would wait till this news subsides, you know, because it's been out for a few days, and then buy on the dip if you're going to buy into this. Conservative investors might want to shy away from this one. Uh, I'm a betting man, and just from the SRP 9001 gene therapy that potentially generate the $2 billion mark at its peak, and that's potentially, I'm, I, I, it's not guaranteed, but potentially. Now, this company has the potential for superior risk adjusted returns but let me repeat this is only one that it's not for the faint of heart you may have to be able to risk it to get those superior returns by no means want anybody to put all their eggs into one basket ye be warned so there you have it folks and as always don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks. Ciao.